Good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to Heavenly Places. I'm here, uh, Jameer, along here with uh, Dorothy. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in this evening. And uh, let me go ahead and open up with a prayer. Father, we thank you for your goodness, grace, and mercy. We thank you for your salvation, Father. Draw us closer towards your plan for our lives, Father. Um, during this time, show us what to do, Father Lord, with each and every moment, each and every second. Let us not waste it, Father Lord. Let us uh, do your will, Father. Um, help our listeners, Father Lord, open their hearts to your word, Father Lord, to your promises. Open me up, Father open Dr. up. Give us the words to say, Father Lord. We thank you. Um, we ask these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everyone. Well, thank you all for uh, once again tuning in this evening, whether you're, whether you're listening uh, right now or you're watching it or listening to it later on because I guess you cannot see us, <laughs> see us physically. Um, but this evening, the main scripture I actually wanted to focus on was um, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. And I'll read the King, King James Version. Um, Second, again, that's Second Timothy chapter two, verse fifteen, and it says, "Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth." So it says, "Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth." Now that right there is a uh, world famous scripture about why we should study the word, you know, and rightly divide divide the word of truth. And I want to apply this one to the word, but also uh just not to the word, but to every single situation and circumstance that we that we may come up against in life or or and not just circumstances that we face in life, but things that we, we see because we're in the uh I guess the media information age. So it's just so much information out there, so many things to study. You can go down a rabbit trail or the rabbit hole, I guess, and you can go down to so many twists and turns. It can take you in so many different directions that you actually forget where you started off from, you know, what you were supposed to be doing because there's just so much out there these days. So that's why I wanted to focus on the second Timothy chapter two, verse 15 to study the word, but also study what we're going through because you should not take everything that people are saying just for granted or as word as words say you should study and research it for yourself. And me personally, besides uh being a background and a believer, um but in my uh career actually I went to school for uh, journalism. I worked at journalism journalism uh uh C B S and I worked in the newspaper before. But also besides that I was uh I work in the field of uh, library science. I have a degree in both of library science and information literacy, a uh, master's in information literacy, about library science. And basically what they, basically they almost, in journalism, you broadcasting it through television or media to the world in different ways. But library, you also, um, also in a sense, you're giving out information because in the library you have the places where they house news, newspapers, uh, periodical journals, um, News clippings, there's just so much information out there. They got fiction, nonfiction, and then these days we have, like, sometimes we have some of the, the uh, fiction getting mixed up with nonfiction. So it's like, oh man, and then you have it, some of the, the news <laughs> that you see, <laughs> unfortunately, it might be some of it might be fiction. You know, you're thinking it's, it's real, it's nonfiction, but it's actually fic- fiction, fiction television that you're watching every, every day, which is, um, very, very unfortunate, but in, in the field of uh, journalism and uh, also library science, they give you skills, and basically a lot of these things we actually already do, but we just don't apply them or use them all the time, um, that we should we should be doing it and investigating instead of taking whatever they say on uh, television um, as, the, as the truth, you know, um, and no matter what news station you watch, whether you watch uh, CNN, Fox, um, MSNBC, 
um, even CBN, all these types of things. And I'm not saying that all these people are lying and all this kind of thing, but I'm saying just their word for what they're saying. I mean, some of these people that are very outstanding journalism to work for these people, and a lot of them may be saying things that are factual. You know, they may be saying things that are actual factual, but you got to be very, very careful because they would use facts, but they can slant them. Um, and that's when you have journalism actually kind of turn into like what they call, and you're very familiar with this word, is uh, propaganda. Propaganda, that's basically where, uh, if you're not familiar with that, it's basically where information that is used primarily to, I'm reading the definition because I don't know it offhand, but I know what it is, but I'm reading the definition. Information that is used primarily to influence an audience and further an agenda which may not be objective and may be presented facts selectively to encourage a particular perception. And it's much longer than that. But you have some media out there where they want you to not be objective and they present you with facts, but they're selective, so they won't put everything in there. They'll cut off part of the uh, interview, and I'd like to uh, share a story with you. Uh, my very first day in journalism class, actually, a very good instructor, uh, Dr. Bean, before the class, he had filmed one of my classmates doing an interview, and he asked her about five or six questions. None of us was in an interview, just her, and he, he was there at the interview. And then he had edited the tape, and then he played it back. And we really, I mean, we, we watched the interview, and we was okay with it, but she was very upset and mad, you know. But we we did it. We wasn't there when they was asking the question. Anyway, she was very upset and mad. And that was because he manipulated the interview. So he cut off certain segments where it seemed like she was uh, agreeing and with with racism. This young lady, she was a a, a Caucasian student, and he was asking questions. He didn't change the questions he was asking, but he edited it and changed it to where it seemed like that she was sounding like a bit racist, you know. And she was upset about it, and we was like, we didn't really see the difference. But we was kind of wondering what was going on with this student. But the thing is, after he showed the interview, then he showed the uh, the complete tape of the interview and what actually happened and how you as a journalism person, he basically was trying to tell us our responsibility as journalists and how we can actually influence people to think wrongly or think differently about persons, situations, or circumstances based on how we cut it, even though he was asking the same questions to that interview. That's what kind of like propaganda is, and a lot of times it's very intertwined with journalism. And basically you're not being objective to the uh, situation. Basically you know what objective is, basically um, basically to be unbiased. You're not really carrying any feelings or emotions in it. You're just basically looking at the facts, the black and white, and you're taking it and going from there. Of course, we are humans. You know, we're not going to be totally objective. We're going to have our own feelings and bring it in with every situation and circumstance, which is, is normal, but you should always want to stick with the facts. And how you stick with the facts, you do Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, It says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That is 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Um, So I want to list out these these one, two, three, four, five different ones. One of them says define, define, define is uh, the first. The first is that you have to define your need, your problem, or the question you have to know what information you need. So define is one of the first ones. Then the next one is define. Um, To be able to find information, to locate it, to access it, and retrieve it, you can do that 
from a variety of sources. These sources include print, which are books, magazines, and text, electronic means, or human info. Oh, I'm sorry, or human information sources, meaning we ask someone, we ask an expert, or ask a colleague. So you got define is the first step. You find what you need, what your problem is, or the, or the question. And these steps I'm giving you is basically the information literacy, what, what you're supposed to do, how you're supposed to investigate um, a lot of it. And a lot of, them, a lot of us, we just start at the defining stage, where it says ask an expert or ask a colleague or or um, or human information for social electronic means. And then and generally we start at the fine and we end at that fine. <laughs> you know, where we just like, oh, okay, well, we, we uh, found out this information from this book or this media or magazine or text, and this is absolutely true, no doubt about it. I'm going to continue to go along with my day, and I'm, I'm going to believe whatever they're saying. But we often, we don't go to the evaluate stage, which is the next one. It says once you have the information, then you need to assess the credibility of it. Just because you have information at your fingertips does not mean it's good information. It is the information, is it like you asked, is it the information that you need? Is it uh, valid? Is it reliable? And one way you evaluate information is you examine who is a person giving me this information. Is this person credible? Are they an expert in their field? Do they, I mean, do they have certifications? Like if this is, for example, a psychological topic, are they somebody that, uh, and just because you're credible, you know what, you can, you can be crazy too, but it's always good to start with this foundation. So if you have like someone who's, uh, in a military, in a military, and all they have is, is, uh, experience killing people and shooting and not a military is way, way, way more than that. But just say, for instance, I'm just talking about somebody who that's the, their only job in the military is just to, to kill someone, to kill someone, you know, um, or maybe the, the fly drones, maybe let's we'll say that the fly drones, but you're trying to find out about psychology, psych- psychological stuff, you know, um, like how the human brain functions and they may have taken a class like that in school or whatever, but, they might just be going off of what someone else is saying. So that right there, you, when you evaluate, you can find out that that source is not very, very credible. So you have to evaluate and make sure is that person or source reliable. And then also somebody might be paying that person to say it that way. So it's just not that person, but what organization are they working for? <laughs> you know, you have to look, look at that too. Um, and after that, so we got to define, find, evaluate. Then you have organized. Then you have the the organize the information so you can use it. If you have ever Googled something, you know you can get a million hits. So you have to figure out the best information. So you have to organize this information. And then one way is to understand that you uh, actually understand that you go through all these processes, you have to communicate the information. That's the last step of information literacy is communicating it. Um, and you can communicate it to a friend, family member, colleague, or, or someone just with, within your field. I'm just listing off different examples. And this is making sure that you are actually understanding what you have uh, Define, found, evaluated, organized, and communicated. And those are the steps of information literacy. So you should do those things with every source. Every source. I always tell people, um, especially when, when, um, for example, one thing that's big has always has been big is politics or whatever. And me myself, I, I, I say that uh, with politics. I say this is very, very, be very controversial, but uh, politics is a way, really, as a tool of the devil. <laughs> I guess I had to just say it like that. In my personal opinion, politics is a tool of the devil because you have so many people talking things and saying things, and they twisting the words, but they're not saying what they're meaning, and they're trying to manipulate people. And politics is like basically how the devil likes to get things done. But then I believe uh, religion, and not just any religion, but uh, belief in Father God, you know, because you have a whole lot of 
religious people. Even you have a whole lot of religious Christians, but the true faith is how God gets things done. So you have politics, even though God does move through politics, I'm not saying that he does not use people through politics because he can use people anywhere. He can use politicians. He can use lawyers. He can use doctors. He can use Navy SEALs. He can use a homeless person, a custodian, no matter what title, our father guy, he does not care. And just as long as you have a heart that wants to seek him and serve him, you know what? He will use it, even though your heart not even totally committed. And you know what? Father God, he will use people who don't necessarily want to be used. <laughs> like, um, for example, King, the Pharaoh, well, not actually not a king, but Pharaoh, you know, uh, he used him that says that uh, his heart was hardened when God was going on miracles. But he used these miracles to show who he was and also um, to... Uh, Free the the children of Israel, the he the Hebrews from the bondage in Egypt. So he used Pharaoh and Pharaoh eventually let them, let them go, um, but he used them as examples. So no matter which side you are, Father God, he's going to use even the devil. You know he has his own agenda, his own propaganda. Guess what? He is actually <laughs> be being used. He's being used by the enemy. You know, um, but with the uh, the politics, one thing that you can you can do with that one is actually you can go to the web page www.senate.gov and you can look at all the bills that they are passing you can look at all the bills that they are passing and you can look at the different senators and representatives and, and people that are signing off and endorsing these bills and you can see what bills that, that they champion like they're the ones who are like yeah I'm proud I'm, I'm the one who started this bill so it could be a bad bill or it could be a good bill, but by going to that center.gov, you can see what they are doing and what they are saying. And actually, one thing recently with this uh, this stimulus bill, um, one thing that they were trying to include in it originally, you might, I'm pretty sure it's probably old news by now, but I just used that example, was a digital digital wallet digital wallet. They were trying to include that in it in this last stimulus bill, but it would not be approved. And basically that right there, even though we know eventually it will happen, basically they had a lot of uh, characteristics of this uh this digital wallet. It had a lot of characteristics of what one might consider a call the mark of the beast, if you ever familiar with that. Basically like the digital wallet's like kind of like an elimination of cash. Where every where even the Bible Bible refers to, there's going to be a time where no man can buy or sell unless they take this this mark. You know, even for example, in China right now, they are much more far advanced and ahead of this this and and uh, than we are here in the states. But they actually have uh, that digital thing. But I also have it connected with social media, so they actually get a social score. So if you're doing things that are Against the government, guess what? Where it says the Bible says you can't buy or sell, guess what? If they, if they give you a little score in that system or if you're not in the system at all, you can't buy anything or you can't go certain places or you can't buy a plane ticket. Sometimes some of the rules are so strict you can't even rent a movie if you get a low rating social score, and that's against the, the Communist Party. And one thing that's very unfortunate about that is it is a uh, China is one of the largest Christian populations. They have a lot of underground churches. They have a lot of people that's praying. Um, so if he, if he over here, just just pray for them because it's a lot. A lot of them is going. They're getting persecuted right now. We do. I mean, they're getting persecuted. They're losing their lives for believing in the gospel. You know. So we need to be in prayer. Prayer for them. That's just a side note. Um, but yeah, that in the media. But I also wanted to give us an example from the uh, from the Bible, from the scripture. Um, scripture, uh, actually, one scripture I want to give you is Luke chapter eleven, verse thirty-four. Luke eleven thirty-four. It says, "Your eye is a lamp of your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is full of light. But when it is bad, your whole body is full of darkness. So it says the eye is a lamp into your body. And that's how do we get a lot of information t- into us? You get a lot of information into us by what we, when you're watching the news. That's how you get it through. You're watching a movie. You're taking in information. 
that's how we remember we said we had what the find information is one of the steps one of one of the way to find it comes through our eyes it also we can come through our it comes to our ears also too um so if if what we're seeing and and what we're hearing guess what it's eventually going to get into our body you know that's why it is important for us to not just find the information but evaluate it organize it you know, and communicate is this information good or bad. Philippians says, uh, think of everything which are true, which so, are just a good report. We need to think think on those things. And then, like, well, all these news reports or whatever, they're bad, but what's good, good about it? Well, one thing, an example is uh, I know you probably heard about this one is uh, the murder hornet coming from Japan. This is this murder hornet is supposed to, like, kill all the bees. Um, so then the bees, you know, what they do, they pollinate their food, and they talking about it in the news. Well, if the bees go, then we go too. And what they're saying is a fact. They're not lying about that, okay? That's how the, the food chain thing operates. But also what we had to realize is uh, I believe that that story was also to promote fear or whatever because there's other videos on there that shows uh, that – a lot of the Japanese honeybees, they came up with the strategy actually to uh, to beat the hornets. And what they do is like the hornets, what they do is they send like a a scout ahead, and then the scout goes and he finds the the hive and all this kind of stuff, and then he goes back and reports. So, and this video showed different videos of of the uh, the hornet going and scouting the hive, and the hornet actually went into the hive, and it is like attacking these bees, but the bees wasn't really fighting back until the hornet completely got in there. Then when the hornet completely got in the beehive, they all destroyed them. They destroyed they destroyed the hornet. And basically the, the hornet that was the scout was not able to go back and inform the other one so they didn't end up attacking. Um, but then there are other videos of all these other insects um, destroying this, this murder hornet, you know. So the media, you know, it's like, even though it wasn't like a really, really big story, it was still a story where people like are started being worried and concerned, but all these other stories about all these insects and how they fight and how they come up with these strategies to defend themselves was not highlighted. So then that's, that's the case where you have propaganda instead of it's being selective and I've reported the whole thing. Uh, one thing also my journalism teacher told us that if, if it bleeds, it leads. If, if it bleeds, it leads. That means if it's bad, that's what you want in the front. <laughs> that's what you want in the front of the thing. And that's that's just how they how they train people. A lot of them, these the journalists, they're some of them they have evil intent, I believe. But there's a lot of them. They're just doing their job, what they was told to do, what they were taught to do, how they're supposed to do it. And they do that because they get raises and all, all these kind of things and types of incentives and things like that. But a lot of them just, they're just kind of going with the process of flow of how things go, you know? Um, and one, one last one I wanted to leave you with is actually uh, about the different perspectives, um, which is one that uh, a lot of theologians and even atheists or whatever, agnostics people, they like to the debate is uh, the comparison of the uh, different resurrections from the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You know, a lot of people say, well, they're all different. They all say the same different things, so it's not true. Somebody lying, somebody not telling the truth. But when you actually compare the different stories, it's just basically like they're telling it from their vantage point. They're telling it they're being objective from what they are seeing. And it's like a, uh, almost like a, uh, they all are, are like a one-dimensional object, like a paper. But if you begin like to fold it into a square, you begin to fold out the paper into a triangle, it's still the same paper, except you're just looking at it from different perspectives. It's, it's not saying that one of them is true, one of them is not. No, it's like all of them is true, but they're just different perspectives. They're different people. So we see things from different perspectives. We see things from different angles, even... And crime scenes, when they ask witnesses what happened, and they say, well, he was this or he was that or whatever. And sometimes, you know, they, they do get it, get it get it wrong, but the officer, they're able to, guess what, evaluate 
at their good officers, because you do have bad officers, but they're able to evaluate and detectives are able to evaluate and discern what what is credible after their evaluation and where the witnesses may witness may have get gotten things incorrectly, you know. So I'll wanna close actually close right there with that one and ask Dorothy if she she has anything she wants to to say or add to, but I think the main thing is before she get on here, just evaluate what you hear and don't let it don't let it cause you to be scared, discouraged, defeated, or conquered. Especially when it contradicts what what the, the the scripture says, what the word says. That's why it says study to show that stuff. There's a whole lot of things that's going on. Actually, I I, I want to say this, mention this one last scripture. Uh, Isaiah 60 verse 2 and it's actually a prophecy about the last time about the end days um, Isaiah 60 verse 2 it says uh, a gross darkness will cover the nation and a thick darkness will cover the people um, in the Bible when you look at the end time scriptures it's a whole lot of bad stuff happening but also it's a whole lot of good stuff happening too so it's just not going to be all bad stuff if you're watching any of those end time movies it's like man it's just like bad and it is bad it is bad it's people that's dying right now and, and a lot of those countries but also bible talk about a great harvest too during this time so that means somebody's out there preaching somebody's out there witnessing um so i bet you i just say just just evaluate what you're hearing don't let it discourage you but fight the good fight of faith and keep on studying the word study it completely and, and also study everything you hear over the media don't let them trick you don't let them deceive you because <laughs> they will have you fight in the wrong battle. Um, Dor- uh, Dorothy, do you have anything you want to say? Well, I'm, I would just say if when you're listening to a news report and you start feeling scared or discouraged, check yourself and say, okay, is this something they're trying to put on me or is this my own reaction? To what's going on because typically it's something that they're trying to put on you emotionally they're trying to manipulate you with your emotions and it it makes me angry when they do it because it's you know so dishonest but uh yeah. yeah just if you find yourself getting all emotional then you know get in the habit of checking yourself and say okay where is this coming from um, sometimes you have to change the channel, you know. Mm. And it's, yes. it's, you know, when you when you were talking about the different perspectives on the resurrection, and there is a story about blind men mm. surrounding an elephant, trying to figure out what kind of animal it is, and depending on where they were, <laughs> like by the tail or by the leg or by the trunk, they were saying different animals. So. Yeah, we all have different perspectives. That's why I like listening to other people's opinions because, you know, we filter things through our past when we hear them. And and just to listen to other people, what they learn, I can learn a lot too. So just because someone has a different opinion is not necessarily a bad thing. So. Yes. And also one thing I want I want to a point out or remind, and just because someone does not have a degree in that field, I know I said you had to be credible, but there are people who who don't have things, certain degrees in certain fields, but they know a lot about that subject, and that's not saying that they're, they're not credible. So it's just a gift, good for you to just to check it because just in case they're not not credible, but there's pe- plenty of people who who know all types of things, and they are never ever studied in that area, you know, as far as like uh, through, through uh, the college system, which is a whole other thing, which is basically a big, big business because one thing I found out is like you go to school for one thing and you end up doing something else, but it's just like, well, why did I study all these things in school? You have people with different majors, like a sociologist person, and they end up working in computers or a person who majored in computers, and they end up working in <laughs> so. so uh, sociology you know so those degrees basically they're, they're to me 
I'm not really against the education, but it's like they're they're just charging too much to the students, and they're taking advantage of them, <laughs> of the other parents, and of the whole system. But I'm yeah, sorry, the, that's the that was... are, <laughs> Yeah, that's it's really bad. The colleges. I never went to college, but you know, my parents taught me you want to learn something, get a book, go to the library. That was before the internet, obviously. But you can yes. teach yourself. Learn yourself. Don't depend on other people to teach you. Um, it's just, you know, I find it easier to teach myself. Yeah. Yes. And sometimes you can be so much stuck in the system and you think of oh, this is the only way it has to be, this is the only way you have to learn. But I went to college and I've seen many people I and I this is what I say all the time. I have family members who went we went to the same college and they didn't finish, but I know even till this day, these people they way smarter than me. <laughs> I know even till this day, <laughs> if we sat down and did like a test or something like that, I probably would get a C and they probably get an A. And I I seen it many times where they was hanging out and doing all these kind of things. And I spent all weekend trying to get this stuff in and there, and they just like they just knew knew it. It didn't take them that long, and they was partying and all that kind of stuff. The weekend that's why one of the reasons why they didn't finish it because they was partying too much. But the thing is, I just learned from that experience that that paper or whatever it don't it don't it don't make you. I mean, it make other people think you are smart. But the thing is, it make you smart as you. Even though I was getting into the books for myself, and it it took me longer to do it, even though it took me long, I still wasn't at their level, you know, in those areas, you know, but I'm more like in things like Bibles and stuff like that. There's Bible school too, but they were just, that paper or whatever, it's just like people get tricked and say, oh, you got this degree and think that you did all this and that. No, there's plenty of people who have not went to school. They have studied things. They know things that people who are supposed to be experts in the fields don't even know. And it's and it's and it's the thing that's it's not the thing that's sad about it is that people won't listen to them. They won't give them a chance, you know, just because because of that, you know. But I know people who know different things, different topics, better than a lot of the experts in the field, you know. So. Well, I've noticed looking in the paper when I was still getting the paper, looking at jobs, you know. It's, you can't even get a regular job without a degree. They want a degree, and I'm going, out if I ever had to go back in the workforce? And I know I was really amazed that they had secretarial college. I'm going, secretarial college? That's basic yes. typing and filing. I know the alphabet. Mm-hmm. I can file, you know. <laughs> Is this <laughs> the thing that, mm-hmm. that they've? manipulated people just for the money, you know, and, and it, putting them in a great deal of debt. It is. It's a debt thing. It's it's like a whole business thing. And when I was working at the university many years ago, um, there was uh, secretaries that were working there, and they got rid of a lot of them because they did not have a degree. It was like because they just had like a, a high school diploma or something like that. But the thing is, if you worked at the university – and a lot of those people, they're gone now. Even the people who are over the, the secretaries, they're gone. But a lot of those admin and secretaries, they knew way more about what was going on. And they would actually, like, you know, like they send out these news releases and these press releases, and then they send out these things both on campus and off campus. And you would be surprised, these people with these PhDs and master's degrees, their grammar and English and all these types of things, how horrible they are. And if it wasn't for the people with the high school degree, <laughs> you know, correcting the paper, there would be so many errors on that paper, you know, and it, it would it would just shock the world, shock the campus, you know. That it that it's it's they're just it's just so backwards how things are with that, that credibility and I just wanted to men- mention that one right there because of a lot of it is good to find the credible thing, but you also the, the the reason why I said mentioned that because you wanted to find out what their motive is. Because some people they're telling things 
and they may come from a certain school or, or a certain way of, of thinking, and that will take away their credibility. So not just because they have the degree or don't have a degree, but also because uh, they have a certain mindset of thinking. So they might be very satanic and evil, and you can find out other things that they're connected with, and you think, oh, that's why they're saying that this way, or that's why they're saying it that, that way. And that's because their their credibility, um, they're really aligned with a certain organization or, or certain I- ideology, which is very uh, satanic and evil. So you want to look at those things, too. Yeah, my, my father was um, an engineer, but he did not go to college. And he, he always said, if you go to college, you're going to, you know, give up your common sense. <laughs> because that's what they do. They take your common sense and they give you nonsense. <laughs> yeah, I heard that uh, that someone told me that a PhD means uh, permanent head damage. <laughs> PhD permanent <laughs> head damage. Uh, I'm sorry for anybody who out there got one. I'm sorry. I'm not trying because there is some people who really know some things. They really give to society, but a lot of people they're just. Like they got the letters behind their name and all this kind of stuff, and they just look down on everyone and think no one else would know anything. But there's so many people. And I'm just so glad our Father God, He is not like that. It says He He don't look at the outward appearance; He look at the heart. You know. So. Yes. Well, I thought we was gonna have uh, the special guest probably tune in, but maybe he has. Well, he's um, been in the queue, you know, but he hasn't. Oh, he just raised his hand. Do you want me to open his mic? <laughs> yeah, yeah. If he wanted, to, if he wanted to say something, if he wanted to say something, yeah. Hello, my friends. How y'all doing today? <laughs> <laughs> just when you didn't think I was there, I've been there listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was Amen. trying to hold on, eating the sandwich here. Oh, yeah! I called myself oh, on yeah, when you first started on, but I accidentally went to sleep. Oh man, business. I was that born. <laughs> no, before I got there, I was asleep. <laughs> wow. one of the things I wanted to talk about real quick is that the spirit realm right now has really been activated even stronger. We got these, uh, you know, that you've seen the movie called Poltergeist. A lot oh, of them yeah. are starting to be a bit activated right now. I have people calling me up. This uh, uh, lady uh, had a, one of her friends died, and the friend's name was uh, Cowboy. And so they cremated him, put him in a, uh, in one of those jars, and they put him. They gave it to one of the other relatives. And as soon as they got him. I'm telling you, as soon as they got him, the car doors started opening up, trunks started opening up and closing by itself. Then it started moving around in the house, and then it started speaking. They could hear voices, and the voice told them that his name was Cowboy, oh, and wow. that they asked where was he. He said he was in hell burning, and because they were Catholic. They got them convinced that if they pay, uh, I think it's called indulgence, that he could be taken out of hell. But people are uh, being misinformed, not understanding what the little word says versus what people say, especially like Catholic faith. I'm not going oh, to yeah. on the Catholic faith, but I'm trying to tell you, there's a lot of stuff they need to know. Even the if you notice, the last two pokes resigned. Mm, make you wonder what's going on here. <laughs> and like this one lady I was doing a deliverance on. Uh, for all who don't know it, my name is uh, Brother Vivian. I do exorcism. I've been doing it for about 38 years, so I know a little bit about what I'm talking about. <laughs> but anyway, uh, this one lady I was doing the exorcism on, and all of a sudden, I couldn't get this demon out. So I looked at her chest. The Lord had me to look at her chest. And I saw this thing around her chest, and I said, listen, you don't want to take that stuff off your, your chest there before I can do anything else. Most people think that, oh, you're doing it under your pot. No, 
If the Holy Spirit ain't telling you how to do something, you will never be able to cast out a demon. And so anyway, as I told her that, this thing screamed. The demon that was in the lady screamed out, no, that's my power. I didn't Hmm. even pay attention, but it was a rosary bead. Oh, and so I, I told the lad, I said, listen, I, you heard that came out of you. It came out of you. And you want to take those rosary beads off. And she said, she, she heard it, so she grabbed the thing and started to pull, and the thing said, no, I told you not to come to this church. I told you not to come. <laughs> anyway, she ripped half of it and was trying to throw it in the trash can, right? She reached for the second part of it, and that thing fought her, trying to keep her from throwing that away. So she pulled mm. that off, and she said it was like, it felt like 80 pounds of weight got kicked off of her. And I said, wow. well, you heard it for yourself. That's why, as I say, knowledge is power. And just like you said, everybody don't have a degree, but you can all study. And yes. just like for myself, I went I used to be at the public library 14 hours a day, spending time studying the scriptures. And the reason was, before then, I used to be a bowler. I used to bowl in those million-dollar tournaments. I used to spend 12 to 14 hours a day in the bowling alley. And God took convicted mm. me and said, that's who your God is, bowling. I went out there, took my designer bowler ball, threw it down the street, and I haven't looked back since. That's been over 38 years. But the things that you will learn if you start to not just listen to some people, but open up your mind to see what is really out there. And one of the things that I learned is listening to uh, Jewish rabbis. Even though you can have two rabbis in the room and have five opinions, that's because they're going to give you an opinion of another rabbi that they've been going to school through. But the thing is, if you listen deep, you can get more understanding about what is it that we believe in? What is it that we're studying? Just like uh, Jesus. Jesus was a Jew. He taught Judaism. He did not teach Christianity. Christianity came from uh, in the Bible where it said they first started calling them Christians at Antioch. But the thing is, what did Jesus teach? What did Jesus give us understanding? Things that I could ask questions right now, and you'd be wondering, well, what does that really mean? To give you an example, when Jesus said, who do men say I am? And they first started quoting, well, you might be Elijah, you might be one of the prophets, you could be John the Baptist come back from the dead. Why did they say that? Nobody really looked at it. It's all it's talking about if you just just barely even look at it, it's talking about reincarnation. He knows hmm. Jesus didn't correct him. But the thing is, did he talk about coming back as no dog and no cat? He was talking about coming back as a person. Well, what does Judaism teach? That's what you gotta find out. You know, like they said, well, do they believe in heaven or do they believe in hell and stuff? It's according, if you ask the right questions, they'll give you the right answer. But see, they study the word sometimes uh, 10 to 12 hours a day, seven days a week. But do we? No, we just study God long enough to find out if he's a genie or not. Lord, give me this, <laughs> Lord, give me that. And that's what they do. People never study, this. you know, most of them never study to show themselves approved unto God, that a workman, that's what it means, a workman that need not be ashamed, but rightly understand, we call it divine, understand the word of truth and what is truth. Truth is what called is emit. And emit is a word that we use also for uh, deliverance. When we get ready to cast out a demon, well, what is the word that we use? Amen, which means an emit. And emit is the word that also, if you take off the E and just say mit, M-E-T, is a word that we use to, to frustrate and destroy kingdoms of witches and warlocks. But that's why I said we got, we got to get back to the old-time studying, getting back to the old time of what God is saying and study what 
he what Jesus was. He taught Judaism. We need to read and study as best we can. Judaism, even in our Bibles, in uh, Psalms 119, we have the scriptures uh, of the Hebrew alphabet, the Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, Hey. But, see, most people look at that and they think like A, B, C, D, but it doesn't. It's more of a scientific way of understanding God's way of creating things. And uh, to give you an example is if I say H2O, Everybody knows what H2O that studies some kind of science. It means water. Well, with Hebrew words, it can be a thousand different words. But if you understand it and you speak it with an understanding and trust, it will will present present vibrations, frequencies, and uh, vibration, frequency, and noise to which you can create things. Well, how do you know? Well, I've seen blind eyes open, deaf ears open, uh, legs grow back, not physically the leg grow back, but I've seen it stretch out to where the leg's leg was shorter than the other. And I say, deaf person who could not speak and could not hear. All of a sudden, they started speaking when I said the word epitha. It's in our Bible. It's mm-hmm. in our Bible. So that's why I tell people, I said, the more you study the more you have power. And that's what we got to have fighting these these demonic spirits here. You got to know how many different demonic spirits they are. You got to know the difference between a devil and a demon and a, a, a warlock and a witch and uh, Satan and Lucifer. They're not all the same. They're different. And that's why the people, the children are being defeated in the churches going to, and in the school. Because they're not being taught right. And the more you teach somebody, the more they'll come to wherever the strongest. If you show me witchcraft is stronger than Jesus, most people will go to witchcraft. But if we teach that Jesus is stronger than witchcraft, and with proof, they would come back to the churches. The churches would be overflowing again. And that's what we need. Amen. Yes. I'm glad to hear from you. You know, I said, oh, I was going to do my best to get on, get to the broadcast tonight, and then sit up and went to sleep before you even came on. <laughs> I said, oh, boy. <laughs> it is fine, but all that information you said is so good about that, just that Second Timothy 2.15, because with the, with the Judaism, that's what Jesus did, so we should we should also do it and study it. But also we know know that he, has, he wants to combine. It says the one new man in Romans. The the old mm-hmm. uh, they're talking about the Jew and Gentile, so we it's not like they would be throwing away everything that they did, but we he, we're bringing that in and he making it. Well, he we not he bringing it in. We just follow him. <laughs> that's what we do. <laughs> yeah, but mm-hmm. not that. Thank you, thank you for um coming in and tuning in, tuning in with us because if you want to give if you want to give like a, a shout out of, uh, about about what about your your service times and. And also about your your broadcast too, because some people they might not listen to listen to this one about the about your uh, like when you have service or, or where if you want to and all that information. Okay, well, thank you, sir. I'm on the uh, on the Dorothy's Dorothy Credit Show on Wednesday at uh, seven o'clock every other Wednesday from seven to eight. Then I'm on. Uh, a pro, uh, bot radio that uh, comes out of uh, Atlanta, out of Atlanta, no, out of uh, Hawaii. I'm not going to give you all the thing, but I'll do this real quick so I don't hold up your time. Uh, I'm located on Jesus Christ Teaching Ministries on uh, Facebook. Jesus Christ Teaching Ministries. I come on at 6:30. To seven thirty on Friday, and Sunday from twelve o'clock to one o'clock, and I teach a lot of different things about what the word says versus what it doesn't say versus what people say it says. You know, a lot of times we miss, as I said, we miss a lot because our churches are set up on the on the Catholic Church, and. That Catholic Church was the the original Catholic Church was a messianic 
Jewish church. But that, back, that, back in 325 A.D., the Council of Trek came in because of uh, Constantine's mother and started bringing in a lot of paganism stuff. And that's like, as I say, paying for money or getting your, your mm-hmm. loved ones out of purgatory, you can't. That is not biblical. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's no way you're going to have enough money to get anybody out of hell. All right. But I hope you all tune in, and I'm going to try to uh, be listening in on uh, my friend here and uh, just make a few comments, not much. I only know a little well, bit. Well, that's well, that's no. He's 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 learned a lot. And one thing I, I like about him is he don't he don't just teach, but he actually like the the uh, disciple where you get a chance to participate. You don't got to be feel like a, a a broke beat down believer. But actually, he lets you exercise your authority, and you will see how it says in Luke chapter ten verse nineteen. It says he has given us authority to trample on snakes and scorpions. And overcome all the work of the enemy, and also Mark sixteen it says we shall cast out demons. Well, if you want to experience any of that stuff, and you be tired of being defeated, I, I, I recommend if you're close to Kansas City area, you go see him. But also, I believe you do it on your your show too. If people call in, right, they can they can come. You can you can well you can deliver them. But if you go see them, you can learn too because everybody's fighting. Everybody's fighting there. Even my, my one time it was a little. Eleven year old go, eleven year old girl, beating up some demons. <laughs> so yeah. it, it doesn't matter how old. he got people from all age ranges. It's people like from in their in their eighties and all that kind of stuff doing things, you know. So he does not not discriminate. He don't care about what color what color you come in, how you dress, how many air rings you got on. Or any any of that stuff. He just believed like teaching the word, and then people be saved, healed, delivered, and set free, and then so you can help others too. So, Amen, brother. I've seen is that yeah. I've seen uh, just just recently a, a man came here with scoliosis. Now we're not having service right now, so it's because of this virus and stuff. But a man came over here because he had scoliosis, and I told him I said. Uh, if you touch the light switch, God will heal you. Because I want people not to look at me. I'm not the person that does the healing because Jesus does. And I said he can use anything. So he walked over there and touched that light switch with his finger, and 98% of the pain left him right then. His back got healed, and the next day he said the other 2% left. We have another one that you know about, uh, Gary, is having about Oh, five or six years ago, Gary had a uh, back problem. He was in so much pain, medicines and everything for 15 years. I came and we came in over to the church and we prayed for that man for about four and a half hours. And that demon finally came up and it was named Jezebel and she had a stinger. And she said, I'm not letting him go. I said, oh, yes, you will. So we fought more and within that four and a half hours. That thing came out, and this man who has been in pain, couldn't hardly walk, got instantly delivered. When he went home, his wife said, I got my husband back. So hmm. I got people that, that documented proof that, you know, that Jesus is alive and well. It's the church that needs revival. And the thing that's happening here with this, uh, this virus, the Lord showed me a wall coming down, a black wall. And just before it touched the ground, light came out from under, and it said salvation. And then the Lord hmm. explained it to me. He said, if people don't get up under that wall now, get out from under that sin, they're going to be lost. In other words, God wants us to repent. That's the first thing he taught us about, repent, repent, repent. That means not a 360, but a 180. Go back the opposite direction and watch how God will bless you. All right. Well, thank you. Yeah. Let me give a few words. Amen. <laughs> thank you. Well, I, I'd like to thank everyone for um for tuning in this evening. I'd like to thank Dorothy for having us, and our brother brother James James Vivian from Jesus Christ Ministry for coming in and and sharing sharing his wisdom. Um, I get I'll, I'll close in prayer. Um, Dorothy, did you want to say something? 
I'm just enjoying listening to the two of you talk about things. The thing that came to my mind when you were talking about, you know, we've got a Judaism is at the root of our Christianity. And that, that that's not to say that all Jews are correct, but even the ones that are incorrect, there's a lot to learn. And we're grafted into the vine that was already there. We didn't just yeah. pop out of thin air, you know. So it's good to know your root. That's right. That is right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, um, I, I, Father God, we thank you for this evening. Father, we thank you for your blessings. I thank you for my friends being on here. Father Lord, we thank you for all the listeners. Father, let them be, be inspired. Let them be motivated, Father Lord, to, to turn from their iniquities, their sins, and transgressions. Father Lord, help them to repent and turn towards you, Father and help them be a light, God, Lord. Don't let them be held in bondage, God. Let them be delivered from all the dangers in this world, follow from the demons that are trying to destroy them and their lives, their, their friends and family lives. And follow, let them study your word, fellow, for themselves to show themselves approved, fellow. Don't let them just take what they hear on TV or even just take what they hear on this show, Father, Lord. Let them get into their word themselves so they can write and divide the truth so they can have the authority and power, Father, and they don't treat you like a genie, Father Lord, but do they treat you like a, a friend, a father who um, wants to love and be with them and direct them and when you want the best for them in every situation and every circumstance, Father. We thank you. Help our country, Father Lord. Help our nation, Father Lord. Our political system, Father Lord. The doctors and nurses in, in these places, Father Lord. And first responders, Father. We thank you, Father. Um, for all your blessings, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I, th- I thank you for tuning in. Uh, I thank you, uh, Apostle uh, Brother Vivian, and I thank you, Dorothy, for have, having me this evening. I guess we'll see or talk to each other next week. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, yeah I, I'm, Amen. I'm so glad you've started doing every week now because – that was the original plan, <laughs> yeah. I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 It's very good. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, oh, I, would just, I would like to ask people to pray for the nursing homes in our country. Um, yes. It's, yes. It was bad in there before. Um, oh, and now yeah. with the virus, it's, it's worse. And my daughter does housekeeping at a nursing home, not the one I was in. Um, And she said they had 35 cases of COVID-19. Oh, wow. And they don't do anything to help the people's immune system but they feed them processed food, you know, Mm. and a high carbohydrate diet. So not a healthy situation. Mm. Yeah, very bad. Yeah, we would, we would definitely keep them lifted up, lifted up, because they, they still got many things to do. You know, it says he's going to pour out his spirit on all people, you know, so he's going to be using them too. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, uh, well, thank well, thank you guys uh, for this evening, and yeah, have a great week, and we'll see see you guys next week. You have a blessed, All right, blessed thank weekend, too. Yeah, thank you guys so much. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Good night, Jameer. Good night to James. Night. You have a blessed evening. And Father bless everyone. Good night. Good night.